Alrighty, in this video we're going to put together health packs. Those should be pretty straightforward to implement. Um, the code is going to look very similar to our insta-kill script, so <laughs> let's just jump in and do it. Um, I'm going to fire up Visual Studio, close out all of these files. Up in here in code, I'm going to add a new class called um, give health. And what the give health method or class is going to do is it's going to be kind of a, a, a it's actually going to be closer to a point star. And what do I mean by that? Well, if we go into our point star, we see that impl impl imp implements mono behavior and I player respawn listener because it has to recreate itself once the player, if the player were to um, die before reaching the next checkpoint. So actually, the give health is going to be pretty much the same thing as point star. In fact, for um, as a uh, additional exercise that you guys can do on your own, uh, you could easily turn this into an abstract mono behavior and have both the give health and the point star inherit from that base class. But either way, let's go ahead and move point star side by side because this class is going to be very, very similar. Let's start off by adding a using Unity engine at the top of our file. Let's make sure it inherits from mono behavior. We're going to have a public game object effect for our particle effect that we are, of course, going to be adding when we get health. And then we'll say public int, um, uh, let's say health to give. Then let's also make sure that we in implement iPlayer respawn listener before we forget and have that method be uh, uh, dropped into our class. Now I'm going to come up here and say public void on trigger enter 2D collider 2D other. I'm going to say var player equals other get component player. If player is null, return. Now what we want to do is we want to say player dot. Now we could say um, uh, take damage and do negative 10. I don't want to do that. I want to create another method on player called give health, passing in health to give and the game object that gave him that health. Now we don't have the give health method implemented yet, but why? Uh, a question that I'm sure a lot of people are asking is why don't I just have a single method for giving or taking health, or why don't I have just the health property of the player be a public property that I can modify? Well, the answer to that question is that I really want to make it very explicit what kind of operations are being done to the player from another object. It's good design to do it this way. The reason is, is because when you just expose data publicly, like if I were to make the uh, health property of the player um, publicly um, settable, then you lose a lot of semantics. You lose a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of knowledge about what it is the person is trying to do to the player. And when you lose that knowledge, your code becomes less readable and you have fewer points of extendability. In this particular case, by creating two methods, give damage um, or take damage and give health, we provide uh, two points to modify the player's health, and either one of them can perform different logic depending on if the health was given or taken away. Now I don't do this on every kind of component. I don't go this method crazy on everything, but I do on certain cases, and the player is a good example of a case where I believe the benefit outweighs the slight drawback of having to write a little bit more code. And that's because the player is such a fundamental aspect of this game, and is something that I definitely want to be as extendable as possible and as easy to use. So we'll say player.givehealth, health to give game object, um, we'll go ahead and we'll instantiate our effect at transform.position, transform.rotation. We'll go ahead and set game object set active false. And then we'll say floating text.show. Um, we'll say plus or string format. Um, we'll just say plus blank that. And we'll say health to give. And then we'll pass in for our style name, I want to pass in give health text. And that's because I want to show a different kind of text than um, our point star. 
Okay, so now we have to do our floating point uh, or our floating text positioner, which I'll just pass in a new from world uh, text positioner, passing camera main, transform position, time to live is uh, 1.5f, and speed is 50. Now, an alternate way of doing this is we could potentially move um, this floating text dot show bit from our um, from our things that give health or give damage into our player itself, which actually I might be I might have forgotten something. Yes, actually our floating text <laughs> there we go because I was like looking at the point um, this point star and I was like yeah it's really weird that I'm sitting there and, and showing the text right there that's kind of odd but um, in reality I do already do that on the player so that's good meaning I am not going to show this text from within the give health instead I'm going to have that happen when the player receives health from any source regardless of if it's a give health script or if it's another kind of script okay Finally, all I have to do is on player respawn in this checkpoint. I have to type in game object set active true, which will respawn this object. That finishes my give health um, component. So to use this component, we just need a particle effect and we need to add health to give. So let's exit full screen and jump over to our player and let's write our give health method. So I'm going to say public void give health. Again, I'm inside the player. And I'll say int health game object instigator. Then I'm going to say first I'm going to say floating text dot show. We'll say plus placeholder. Wrap this in a string format. Plus placeholder. Uh, passing in health. We'll pass in player um, uh, player dot health text. And we'll pass in a text positioner of from world point camera main, transform position, 2f, 60f. Then we need to say health plus equals health. And that's really all we got to do. Alrighty, so that finishes our player um, implementation of health. But we do need to do a couple of things. First of all, we definitely need to write this player got health text style. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to create an actual health pack. So coming back into Unity, we can go into our resources folder, open up our game skin, scroll all the way down to our custom styles, and I'm going to add a new style. So I'm going to type in 7, click on our new style, set its name to player got health text. I'm going to set its normal color to a green color, because a green is it's a very healthy color. Then I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to set its font size. I'm going to set the font size to the same thing as player take damage, which is 17. And I'm going to make it bold. So I'm going to set it to a font size of 17, and I'm going to make it bold. And that will be our um, style that we use when the player receives additional health from wherever. Now let's actually create our health pack. So to do that, um, we're going to, we're just like with the stars, you remember our stars, our point stars, um, how we have a parent game object with the collider on it, then we have a child game object that has the sprite on it, we're going to do the same thing. The reason is, is I want to be able to animate that. So, um, or animate the individual um, sprite render, or sprite object underneath it. So I'm going to go ahead and say game object create empty, and I'm going to place it at 0, 0, 0. Then I'm going to go into textures, open up my texture atlas main, find my health pack, drag it out. I'm going to set its position to 0, 0, 0. I'm going to zoom in here on it. I'm going to set health pack as a child to game object. The game object is going to be renamed health pack. Then on the game object itself, I'm going to add a box collider 2D. I am not going to add a rigid body because I don't expect these guys to be moving. Then let's go ahead and set up our, um, we don't need to set our setter, but we do need to change our size. So let's up our size. I think that should serve us well. Then let's create our give health, or add our give, give health component. Let's say health to give 25. 
Now you'll notice that we have an effect right here um, that we haven't supplied yet. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new particle effect. I'm going to open up prefabs, go into effects. I'm going to find my um, I'm going to find my uh, hmm, my small yellow burst. Is that is that a good size? I think that is a good size. However, I am going to click on small yellow burst. I'm going to say game object, break prefab instance, and I'm going to rename it small green burst. Then I'm going to scroll down to its uh, color over lifetime, and I'm going to change it from yellow to green. Now I'm going to hit simulate, and I think that looks good, except I don't want it to fade to white. I think I want to fade it to maybe a different green, maybe a maybe a more saturated green. There we go. I like that a lot. Okay, so let's go ahead and prefabify our small green burst. I'm going to click and drag it onto our effects folder. And then I'm going to remove it from the game, or from the hierarchy. I'm going to click on my health pack. I'm going to click on the parent of my health pack. And then I'm going to take small green burst, and I'm going to place it on effect. Then I'm going to turn health pack into a prefab. And now that it's a prefab, I can go ahead and delete it. Now before we hit start and try, or before we place some health packs, hit start and try to test this, I do want to go back into my player script because I did forget something really important. And that is, it, we should not do health plus equals health. Instead we should do health equals mathf dot min health plus health comma max health. And that's so that we can't um, uh, we can't go more or have more health than our max health. So I'm going to delete this original line now that we've corrected that mistake. Coming back into Unity, let's go ahead and place some health packs. So I'm going to place a health pack right here, and let's place a health pack right here, and that should be fine because we're not really designing a level yet. We're just testing out our individual um, game mechanics. So I'll go ahead and hit play. All right, let's um try to get damaged, and we see that we don't actually collide with the health pack, and that's gonna be because I forgot to on my health pack set my um collider, my box collider 2D to is trigger. So let's go ahead and set the box collider 2D to is trigger, and then let's hit apply. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and hit play again. And we should be able to collect that health pack. And we do, and we get plus 25 health. Now let's take some damage. Oh, let's not die as we try to take some damage. Also, our health pack does um, come back to life. Alright, so we took a bunch of damage. Let's go ahead and jump on this health pack over here. After dying, again. Uh... <laughs> wow, I might have made this game a little bit too difficult so that testing it is kind of a pain. Oh man. Alright, let's try this one more time and then I'm just going to declare this as working. So let's take some damage first from the cannon. Oh, come on. Take some damage from the cannon. There we go. Ugh! Okay, we have to try this one more time actually. No, we have to try this one more time. Seriously, I should make like, um, we should do achievements, like um, manage to get hit by cannon and then got the second health pack and then beat the game or something like that. I don't know. Okay, so now we see that we're slightly damaged. Let's go ahead and um, jump on this health pack. Okay, I'm done. It works. All right, guys. Um, in the next video, <laughs> we're going to take a look at uh, constraining the player to our level. Because as you can see right now, um, if we try to jump off the edge over here, we'll just fall forever. As you can see, our player is somewhere down there. Uh, he's probably already... Yep, there he is. Right there. So we definitely want to uh, make it so that our player um, doesn't fall down forever. We want to constrain the player to the scene. 
So, we'll see you guys in the next video.